Thank you for that good singing tonight. I'm thankful tonight for the blessings of the Lord. And I want us to pray for our church and pray for our country. Our country needs prayer. And uh, we all need God's uh, blessing upon us. I want to turn to Hebrews chapter number 10 for a little bit tonight. Hebrews chapter number 10, if you will, please. This is on page 1300. Let's see, the page is torn. 1301 in the old Scofield Bible. 1301. Hebrews chapter number 10, verse 31. Verse number 31. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. But call to remember it's the former days in which after you were eliminated, you endured a great fight of affliction. Now right here, I want you to notice that word in verse 32, endured, endured. And I want to talk about endurance for just a little bit tonight. My friend, we know that endurance, it, it means that we are patient. It means that we're tough. <clears throat> Excuse me. And it means that we continue in what we're doing without backing up. In other words, persistence and uh, perseverance. All of these are definitions for that word endure. Now, this writer right here making people, he's making people realize under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, what a tragedy it is to come to miss coming to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of God under any circumstances. That is, when He's, he's not pleased with us. A backslider is going to get a spanking, and that doesn't uh, suit too well sometimes. But a lost sinner that rejects Christ and dies that way, it's going to be a terrible time for that sinner in eternity. My, listen, somebody said this past week we were talking, there are no atheists in hell. You may be an atheist here, but once you get to hell, you're not an atheist. You know there's a God. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Nobody is more powerful than God Almighty, and it'd be foolish to go against Him or to refuse Him. Some try to apply verse 31 to a believer's disobedience. And believers have already accepted the fact that God's judgments uh, have been put on Christ, and we have accepted uh, the Lord Jesus as our payment. And my friend, this is why we believe this gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ from our heart. And by believing, we're saved. We're sitting here in this church tonight on this wonderful rainy night. Hey, it may be kind of dreary outside. I love it. I love the rain. I love these kinds of days and nights. Brother, but I'm glad inside there's something that is just as bright as every day, whether it's raining outside or not. We're saved people. That's why. So we are admonished right here to remember the former days. Speaking of the days when we were first awakened by the Holy Ghost of God and enlightened by His Word. Now we turn to God and we turn from the world, the flesh, and the devil. Boy, you remember that. Those years have gone by in a hurry. Brother, listen, I'm telling you, I'm so glad that I did it when I did. I should have done it. I, I mean, I wish I had done it before, but that was all in God's plan. God knew when He was going to get on me. He knew when the Holy Ghost was going to bring me down. But I'm glad that I got saved when I did. And I tell you right now, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. I wouldn't trade Jesus for the whole wide world because Jesus has really made a difference in my life. Now, we were willing to suffer even when we got saved. When you get really saved, uh, you don't mind really. You don't like suffering. Nobody does. But we're willing. We're willing to suffer for Him. And many of us, of course, have problems. We all have problems. And some of those problems come in words, uh, and some of them come in actions. Some people say bad things about us. They just say in our name. They call us things that we're not. And they just put the pressure on in words, but they never do anything else. But some will go beyond that, and they'll try to touch our, they may not be able to touch us physically with some kind of weapon or anything, but they'll try to affect our vocation, our ministry. They'll try to hurt.
hurt our church. They'll try to tear it down. They'll make fun of it or they'll lie about it. Brother, listen, I've been here 52 years and I've seen nearly everything uh, that a church can go through. Probably not everything, but I have been through many things uh, that the church goes through. Now, we're exhorted right here to continue, though, to continue in the faith uh, and not give in to pressure no matter how it comes. Christian, you are sitting here a privileged person tonight. You are saved. Remember that. Remember back when you got saved. He said go back. And remember when you were enlightened, when the Holy Ghost got a hold of your heart. If you're sitting here tonight and you're not really saved, oh, I beg you, I beg you tonight, give your heart to Jesus and be happy in the Lord. Now he said, cast not away your confidence, uh, which hath great a recompense of reward. We must endure, child of God. How so? Well, first of all, we must endure hardness. In 2 Timothy 2, 3, the Bible says, endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I don't know if you know it or not tonight, but all Christians are soldiers in the army of God. And a good soldier is always, he has to approve himself before his peers. And he must be a faithful and a loyal uh, person to his captain. He cannot be a deserter. He cannot be a deceiver. He cannot go behind the captain's back, find fault with him, and say all kinds of evil things about him. He has to be loyal to his captain. Jesus is our captain tonight. Are we faithful to him? You say, I wouldn't dare say anything about Jesus, but the way you do, the way you act sometimes, you're not doing what Jesus would have you do. Over in 1 Timothy 2, 1, the Bible says, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Now, all good soldiers expect difficult times. Not a soldier in our army, our regular army tonight, that doesn't expect some rough times in the army. Wayne, uh, my little grandson, Wayne Craft, he's over there uh, right now in Syria, somewhere over there right now. And uh, uh, I know that he likes what he's doing, but he can expect trouble anytime. Things can happen. And a good soldier looks for that. I remember back in Desert Storm, some of our soldiers were over there and they were holding them back. And some of them said, we're getting tired of sitting around. We want to fight. Brother, I like to see a soldier that's ready to take on his enemy. And so in the spiritual realm, it's the same thing. We've got to take on our enemies. So my friend, we find right here that you've got to be patient. You've got to be patient and uh, use real uh, sensible thinking. I mean, you've got to think about what you're doing to be a good soldier. Now, we must be focused on the fight. If we're going to win the battle, we've got to focus on the fight. We've got to know who we're fighting and what we're fighting for. Now, brother, I'm telling you, we're fighting for the faith. The Bible calls it the good fight of faith. And we're fighting for the faith, not to get it, but to keep on keeping on <coughs> like we are right now in the Lord. I'm glad that our president has said, and he said it last night, preachers can preach whatever they want out of their pulpit. Brother, I'm glad our president said that. I haven't heard a man up there say anything like that in years. I remember back, uh, what, 20 years ago, uh, they were up in Canada. I don't remember the exact year, but they were saying that preachers could not preach certain things or against certain things because uh, that uh, it was a hate crime, it was a hate speech, and you are hating people when you talk about sin. And Canada was trying to restrict them. I think they did pass an ordinance somewhere up there. But they said that it'll be in America next. Well, it hasn't come yet. It was coming, though. It was headed this way. It certainly was headed this way. And, brother, this Christianity that you and I are a part of, we're being uh, persecuted all over the world, Christians everywhere. But thank God, as long as our president believes I have a right to stand in my pulpit and preach whatever comes out of my mouth, what God lays on my heart, we got a chance. And so, brother, I'm not backing down. I wouldn't back down if they made a decree. Daniel didn't. We're supposed to obey the law of the land as long as it doesn't violate the moral law of God. But old Daniel, when he heard the law, it was made, you can't pray to a God for 30 days. Uh -huh, didn't pay, no, Daniel, Daniel didn't pay any attention. He went on and prayed to his God anyway. 
got cast into the den of lions, but he got out of there all right too. Because the God he prayed to was the true and living God. We're not worshiping an idol tonight. We're worshiping Jesus. And he's the same God Daniel prayed to. Same God, brother. So we will face many difficult times. And we'll face many difficult enemies in our Christian life. But we must endure hardness as a good soldier. Then number two. I'm going to name just a few here. My friend, we are to endure afflictions over in 2 Timothy 4, 5. But watch thou in all things endure afflictions. Do the work of the evangelist. Uh, make full proof of thy ministry. Now we must be alert. We must be alert all the time. And watch for things that are happening all around us. Pastors have to be alert. Not only for themselves, but for the congregation. There are doctrines that would come into this church in a snap of your finger. If I didn't say, oh, that's far enough. I have started talking with people out visiting before, and they would get talking about God, talking about religion, and I said, oh boy, I got somebody here I can fellowship with. Oh boy, I may be able to get this person to come to church. And before you know it, they start off in another route, talking about their God, talking about another God. There is no other God, really, but they've got other things in their mind about who God is, and it's anti-Bible. It's away from the Bible. If it goes away from the Word of God, I cannot have that. I cannot have that in this church as a member. Now, if they want to come and visit the church all day long, that's fine. But to get on that road, you've got to profess Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and you've got to believe that from your heart. So we must watch for these things. The snares of the devil, they're everywhere. The devil has traps set for you and me. We must watch for our fellow man, as I see it, not just for myself, but I've got to watch out for you. I can't let a false doctrine come in here and set up camp. I cannot, you know, like I told you some time ago, years ago, Robert Schuler wrote me a nice letter, wanted this church to join the ecumenical movement. And I had to write back and say, we don't believe like you believe. In other words, the Bible says, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Well, in the world... The ecumenical movement, religious ecumenical movement, they've got all kinds of religions in there. You've got some that believe right. You've got some that don't believe right. You've got some that believe Jesus is the way. You've got some that believe other things are the way. Well, see, I can't joke up with that. So we couldn't join the ecumenical movement. But I'm glad I belong to an ecumenical movement. Ecumenical means worldwide. I'm a member of the body of Christ worldwide. Every blood-washed, born-again child of God is my brother or sister in the Lord. So we must watch out for our fellow man, and then so doing, we're going to be greatly afflicted. We'll have afflictions to come our way. Now, affliction means adversity. It means trouble. It means distress and pain, etc. So if we serve the Lord as we ought to, and uh, we ought to serve Him now, Christian. Everybody here ought to. But you're going to have some adversity. You're going to have some hurt. And after a while, you'll have some pain. It's not going to be all gravy. It's going to be some tough times. Now, I was never hurt so badly in my entire life until I started serving Jesus. Never hurt. When I was out drinking and cussing and raising hell like the devil wanted me to, I was never hurt toward somebody. Nobody ever put me down that I know about. We had friends. We went off together and all that. But I, I, we had fights, fist fights and things like that. But nobody ever hurt me and said, Sammy K's no good, Sammy K's that. No, they didn't do it. But boy, when I got saved, when I got saved, I was so shocked to realize that people don't like Christ. And they don't like you and they don't like me. And I realized, boy, I tell you, I'm up against it here. And I have never, I have never faced such hateful opposition as I have since I've been saved. I have never heard so many lies told on me as I did and that I do since I've been saved. Now, we're told to endure these things. God said, go on, son. Go on. They're going to lie about you. They're going to curse your name. They're going to tell people things about you that are not true. Go on. Don't quit. Just keep on keeping on. Well, I'm going to do what the captain said. I'm going to fight on. 
I'm going to fight on until I can't fight anymore. So we must, we must feel, fulfill our ministry, he said. So we must endure hardness. Then we must endure afflictions. But then, here's one. We must endure a, a, a chast, chastisement. Over in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 7, if you endure, if you endure chastening, chastising, chastising, God dealeth with you as with sons. Now, we're God's sons. Chast, chastisement is a painful thing, but it's not a bad thing. Sometimes that's what we need. Now, we don't enjoy it, but when we were coming up as children, when mom and daddy spanked us, it wasn't because they hated us. They were wanting us to do right. And they told us to do right. They taught us to do right. We went against their teaching, and they would spank us when we kept on disobeying. God will do the same thing with His children. Over in Hebrews 12, 6, the Bible says, For whom, he, for whom the Lord loveth, He loves us. For whom the Lord loveth, He chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom He receiveth. Every son. If you're God's child tonight, and you disobey God, and He warns you, and warns you, and you don't pay Him any attention, He's going to chastise you. He'll spank you. God is a greater father than any earthly father on this earth. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 7, if you endure chastisement, God dealeth with you as with sons, for what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? A father that refrains from correcting his children and raising his children right and causing them to be disciplined is an unwise father. If he refuses that training, he's not a wise father. The Bible says, Fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And so when I was young, I remember I plowed. I had to farm, and we plowed a lot of fields. But there was one field we got one time, and it was 35 acres. I remember how large it was. And out in the middle of that great big old field was a great oak tree. And sometime in the past, there must have been a dwelling there because out from that tree, about a hundred yards, was a well. A well, and that, my daddy found out that that well was open. It had no covering on it. So he warned us boys not to run across that field and fall in that well until we can get some timbers and build a box over it. And so if daddy saw you going across that field and he hollered and said, Stop, don't go any further, you better stop. If you kept on going in disobedience, he'd say, stop. If you kept on going, then he'd catch up with you, and then he'd tan your hide, and he'd make you go back to the house. You would not go against your dad's better judgment. Kids are foolish. They do things, and we always wanted to go look in that well. But during that time, right, right along close to that, there was another well that was in the news, on the news, that a little boy had fallen in to an open well. That was probably about 10 miles from where we lived. And everybody was so blue, that little boy died. They couldn't, they couldn't get him out in time. He died. And this, uh, that kind of put a scare in all of us. So we got the timbers and covered the well somebody else, so nobody else would fall into it or an animal wouldn't fall into it. Uh, but you know that Daddy was right. Don't go running across that field forgetting what you're doing and tumble off into that well. So there are dangers out there, and God's saying to you and me as His children, don't do it. No, don't do it. I think I'll just quit tithing. God said, don't do it. I think I'll quit Sunday school. God said, don't do it. God's already told us that we're to do all this, so if you don't go against it, He's telling you not to do it, not to do what you're planning to do. Stay with the stuff. Keep going for God right on. I don't care how discouraged you get, how blue you get, how weak you get. I don't care what your problem is. You have no right to go against the Holy Word of God. And so keep going for the Lord. And what if we had, if we had disobeyed God, uh, our dad, and fallen into that well, I wouldn't be preaching to you tonight. But see, we have to endure Endure hardness as a good soldier. Endure afflictions that are going to come. And endure chastisement because that's a promise. You disobey God, you will not listen to His warnings, then He'll chastise you. And then there's another thing here. We are to endure contradiction. 
In Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 3, the Bible says, For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. Jesus is truly our example right here. Jesus was perfectly holy, as we all know. Yet he endured the evil manners and the evil assaults from wicked people. He put up with a lot to save your soul and mine. He endured with great patience. He endured every evil that came upon him, no matter how it came. And then his sufferings were so great that they finally led to the cruel cross where he died for your sin and mine. For the joy, the Bible says, that was set before him, he endured. He endured the cross, despising the shame, and is forever set down at the right hand of the Father. My friend, Jesus endured that cross. So you and I <laughs> would never have to endure one. We'll never have to die on a cross and go to hell. We'll never have to experience anything like that because Jesus did it for us. What is our duty as a Christian tonight? We must look unto Him, the author and finisher of our faith. We must consider Him as our prime example. And we must meditate in His victories in order to have them ourselves. And then we must really endure contradiction from sinners. In Hebrews 12, 3, the Bible says, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. Endure hardness as a good soldier. Endure afflictions. Endure chastisement. Endure contradictions. And then we must endure temptations. In James 1, 12, the Bible says, blessed is the man that endureth temptations. You ever been tempted? Yeah, you have. How do you know? Your flesh. That's how I know. Uh, the Bible teaches that there are trials and there are temptations. And we're going to have trials of all sorts. And then we're going to be tempted to do wrong. We're going to be tempted to fall down and just let up and give up and quit. Boy, I can't stand to see a quitter. I like to see a fighter. I like to see them when they get knocked down, get back up. I remember they had a little old boy down at Malden years ago. And that joker, he'd get in a fight nearly every day or two. And he'd get knocked down by those old big boys. But those big boys got to where they dodged that little rascal. Because every time they knocked him down, he got back up. They couldn't hurt him. They could hit him. They could just knock him flat. He'd get right back up, be right in their face. So they all got kind of tired of having to face him because he was so consistent in his fighting. And he finally had all of them leave him alone. But that's the way you get, it, get the devil off of you. Keep on coming back. Every time the devil knocks you down, get back up. Every time you get discouraged, get encouraged again. Every time you feel like laying out of church, come to church. Listen, if I came to church only when I felt good in my body, I would never come. I'd be at home, you know, in the bed, on the couch. No, but I come to church because I want to worship the Lord. I want to praise His name. So we desire to do well, but we're sick. Hey, don't we all want to be well? But some of us are sick. We go to some many doctors, and I can't keep up with them. I mean, which one do I go to this week? I've already been to one. I've got to go to another one Friday, and I've got to go to two next week. Just one right there. I've got to take Ann. Ann has to go too, and we are, we'd like to be well. But hey, we're going to endure. By the grace of God, we're not going to quit serving God. We're going to keep on serving God and praising Him, because something good will come one day from all these sufferings. So we have bills to pay. Money runs short. We want family harmony. Sometimes they're divided. We want to live a holy and a real spotless life for the Lord Jesus, but we, fought, we fail. We find ourselves, like Paul said in Romans 7, things I want to do, I don't do. Things I don't want to do are the things I do. But it's not I that do it. It's sin dwelling within me. He said, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? He said, I thank God through Jesus Christ, my Lord. Jesus is our Savior, not for just a time, but for all eternity. Jesus saved us to keep us through every storm of life. 
When you're up, when you're down, when you're right, when you're wrong, brother, he's your Savior, hallelujah. From now till we meet him on the other side. We're going to meet him one day and face to face and literally see him who died for us. So we want to live holy, but we have to fight in order to live holy. We place, we want to be faithful, and sometimes we feel like giving it up. People don't appreciate it. People don't love me. Now, don't ever get on a pity pot party. Don't ever get that way. Don't ever go to feeling sorry for yourself. That's the worst habit you can get into. Is oh, I'm so, they just don't treat me right. You don't know how much people love you. So quit pouting and quit doubting and start praising. And start, hey, living, living it up. And hey, if you want to be friends, what's the Bible say about it? You want friends? He said, show yourself friendly. Huh? In other words, if you want to be a friend and you want to have a friend, don't go up and say, hey, huh, huh, huh. Hey, get with the program. Hey, get happy. Start smiling and let it be real. Don't let it be something I told you to do and you're doing it to please a man. Do it to please God. Start smiling, start meeting people, start shaking hands, start mixing with people, uh, get into the thing. Don't stay up there and expect everybody to just come running to you. Uh-uh. Don't be a Pelosi, I mean a Pelosi, a Pelosi or whatever her name is. Don't be a, 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 a hater. Don't do that. Say, well, I just don't like that person. Well, praise God, I might be your best friend later on. You, know, you don't ever know. You don't ever know. And so then we are to endure, and then we're going to endure lastly all things. Over there in 2 Timothy 2.10, Therefore I endure, Paul said, I endure all things for the elect's sake, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. So we can name many things today that we have, that we do, and that we will experience in our life. We could just write them down, put them on a piece of paper, write them all down, and we still miss a lot. We don't know what all we're going to face in this life, but you've got to determine. You've got to determine in your heart and in your life, dedication is that, that I'm going to suffer, I'm going to endure whatever comes my way, no matter how it comes. Whatever description, I don't care. I'm going to endure until I see Jesus. So we must endure them all, Paul said, continually, and until we get all the way home to glory, we will surely influence other people to do the same. If people see you and me living a dedicated life, it will influence somebody to get on the bandwagon. Somebody else will want to do the same thing. I know that influenced me as a young Christian. I'd see Christians that I had confidence in. You've heard me refer to mom and dad at us many times in this church. I used to watch that old couple. I used to watch them closely. Boy, they were so holy. They lived so holy and righteous. I wanted to be like that. I want to be a real saint of God. I don't want to be a put on. I don't want to be a plaything. I even pray to God that he'll make me a real man of God. Not a put on man of God, a real man of God. I want to be as real as Paul was. I want to be as real as Moses was. Now, I'm not going to be Moses or Paul, but I want to have the same love for God that they had. I'm serving the same God they served. So the longer we endure, the stronger we become. And we soon testify like Paul did. He said, I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Are you content tonight? Are you contented sitting here? Are you frustrated in your heart and mind? Are you really troubled? Are you worried? Are you fretting? Are you dreading something? Are you dreading something coming up tomorrow, next week, or sometime? Don't dread it. Turn it over to Him. We sang about it tonight. We sang about it tonight. Let's don't just sing about it. Let's do it. Turn it over to God. Quit worrying and start trusting and say, I'm going to endure. I'm going to endure whatever comes my way, and I'm going to still praise the name of the Lord. Endure hardness, affliction, chastisement, contradictions, temptations, and all things. Let's stand our feet. If you're here tonight, anybody, or by streaming, you're not saved, 
I invite you to Jesus Christ. I invite you to come and let Jesus be your Savior. The altar is open if you want to come here. You can get saved right where you stand. You can get saved right there by streaming. So you've got to call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and invite Him into your heart, and He will save you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you right now. And Lord, we thank you for the grace of God that is so great. Father, the grace that keeps us going, as Paul said, and we're looking for that grace to shower us, and Father, to build us up, and give us a determination. Father, make us so strong in the Lord that we'll endure everything contrary to what we believe and what we stand for. Don't let us let any enemy tear us down, rob us of the victory, but give us victory in our wonderful Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.